Hey everyone, if I told you there was a strategy that made it possible to get first blood on the enemy laner every game in the first three levels, would you believe me? Well, you shouldn't believe me, because it doesn't exist, as every league game and matchup are different, so you can't really make a strategy like that. However, it is still possible to get first blood every single game in the lower ranks, because the enemy laner has no clue what they're doing every single time, otherwise they wouldn't be in that elo. I'm going to prove this to you in this video, where I played three games in a row in silver, all on different champs and in different matchups, and get first blood in the first three levels every time. Now you might be thinking, well you're smurfing, of course you should get first blood. Yeah, but I'm smurfing to show you how the players in your own elo play so you can see they are always making mistakes. These games might be in silver, but the same would happen in plat or gold as well. So let's jump right into our first game here where I'm playing Camille vs Rengar top. First off, in top lane, you really have to think about level 1 every single time. We talk about this a lot in our videos, which should tell you how important it is. In low elo, nobody knows how to play level 1. They will fight minions, or try to fight someone who is really strong at that point. They will make so many mistakes. This game, like I said, I'm playing Camille vs Rengar top. He has ignite and electrocute, which could definitely change how the matchup goes. Also, Rengar top has one of the strongest laning phases in the game. If you had to guess, whose level 1 is stronger, Camille's or Rengar's? Camille's level 1 is stronger for two reasons here. First, if she starts Q, she gets more auto attacks off since it's an auto reset. And secondly, Rengar has Electrocute, not Conqueror. Conqueror is the extended trade rune while Electrocute is better for burst. I know this, so watch what I do. I first go looking for the Rengar walking towards the brushes, because I want to fight him at level 1 thinking he's going to be way too confident and try and fight me as most Rengar players would. I don't find him though, so I go into lane and stand there in the middle. I'm hoping he jumps out of the brush and tries to fight me. After a few more seconds of waiting, he takes the bait and jumps on me. I'm going to do a few small things here, and the first one is, I make sure to auto, then Q, making use of my auto reset, and after hitting him with my second Q, I use the movement speed to back away a bit to stay out of his auto range, before turning around to go back in again and proccing my grasp. Then I click away again, so he chases me a bit, and it lets me wait out my auto attack timer. When my auto is ready, I can turn around and go back in, and I do this two more times until he ignites me and flashes into the brush. My Q is one second away from being off cooldown, and I know just one of my auto attacks won't kill him, and I also know that he has no way of killing me. So I back off for just a second, then turn around and let him jump out of the brush onto me, and use my auto Q again to finish him and get first blood. Alright, so for this first game, it could seem like he just inted and I won 1v1 by right clicking him. But you should be able to see now, there were a few mechanical concepts there, on top of the game knowledge of baiting him into a level 1 fight, he thought he would win. This is what I mean by they will always be misplaying and have no idea what they are doing. Rengar should have played for his level 3, because at that point it's really hard for me to deal with him. But he just went in at level 1 without stacking his ferocity or anything, and I punished for it. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, a sub to the channel would be incredible. For this next game, I'm playing Quinn vs Teemo Top. We both have Ignite, and this is definitely a Teemo favorite matchup. Most of Quinn's damage comes in bursts from her W passive autos, and Teemo's blind counters that. So at the start of the lane, I'm going to auto attack some minions as I want to play for level 2. Since I'm in a losing matchup, I want to use the wave to make up for it and potentially just get a level 2 all in kill. But as I'm doing that, Teemo comes running out of the brush looking to auto attack me. Now we're both ranged so I could just auto him back, right? Wrong, because he does more damage than me if we trade auto attacks. So instead, I just back up out of his auto range while collecting my first few CS. And if we pause, now look at the situation. Because I focused on the minions, the first three are dead and I have six minions to fight for me so he's running away now. Now is the time I can walk up, auto, E and auto again, which procs electrocute and chunks Teemo for about 40% of his health. Then I collect my last few CS from that wave and see that I'm getting level 2 ganked by Kane. This isn't a normal thing and for good reason. Kane has no real chance of killing me here and is lucky I didn't hit level 2 while he tried to kill me or I would just kill him and take the red buff. I don't have to use flash or anything though, and notice, I autoed him a few times, but I didn't use my E. Why do you think I saved it here? It's because I could walk away easily since he doesn't have his W to slow me, and I have no kill pressure on him at level 1, so why waste the ability? This pays off immediately as I'm moving back up to the wave and hit level 2. Teemo is way overextended and got baited by this terrible gank, so I use Q, then E, and auto with ignite to get first blood. Again, just abusing every little mistake the enemy makes because they are constantly making them. 
Remember, all of these games happened in a row. The main takeaways from this one were pushing for a minion advantage to make up for a counter matchup, saving abilities when I didn't have kill pressure on the jungler and not panic flashing away, and not playing too safe when I was getting ganked, making sure to do a lot of damage to the jungler and turn and kill the Teemo as well. Alright, moving on to the final game here where I'm playing Trundle vs Garen. Before getting into the gameplay, let's test your knowledge. At level 1, who wins this matchup? You should know Trundle hard wins almost any level 1 against a melee champion. His Q is an auto reset and steals AD from them. He beats people down at level 1 and I learned the hard way back in the day, just like the Garen is going to have to learn. So as laning starts, watch my positioning the entire time. I'm making sure to stand near my melee minions, only walking away from them to grab a last hit before turning around right away to get back. The Garen was playing properly for a bit, not walking up and giving me any window to fight. That's fine and there's nothing for me to do. That's going to happen in your games and you should just be waiting for the mistake. If you try to make something happen without them making a mistake, that's called forcing and it will always turn out bad. But now that his CS are getting low, he doesn't want to play so safe anymore and walks up for this one that's behind me. And here it is, like I said, the big mistake, and it's only level 1. I just wail on him here, using my auto Q for the auto reset, and pop PTA really fast, and do it one more time before backing off, taking 80% of his health just like that. That was all because he didn't want to give up one minion. But you can see how I didn't force it, and was in position to punish. Anyways, Garen didn't learn his lesson and runs up with Q and hits me. I'm pretty sure he was trying to click the minion though. Either way, he obviously isn't going to win this trade as I proc PTA again and bring him back down to 30% health. After that, I need to act fast here. Garen's passive will give him a lot of health back if I push too slow, and the next wave is arriving. So I'm going to let this second wave stack up with my first wave to create a big one, then quickly clear the minions and crash this on the tower so I can look for a dive. As soon as the wave is crashing on the tower, I go all in, using my auto resets like before, standing right on top of the Garen so I can follow him with flash, as it's obvious he's going to try to flash away, and I get first blood at level 2 and survive from triumph. So the main takeaways from this one. I didn't force anything. I knew my level 1 was stronger, but Garen was playing safe so I just grabbed my CS and waited for his CS to get low. He didn't respect my level 1 and stopped playing safe when CS was involved, and that gave me my window to punish really hard. Then I quickly pushed in the wave. Dove tower level 2, which is something I never see in low elo. Don't be afraid of towers, it's better for you to dive and fail to get the practice over not diving because you're scared, as long as it's the right play. If they are below like 40% health under tower and you're nearly full, go for the dive every time. Alright guys, so as you can see, in the lower ranks they are making lane losing mistakes almost every second of the lane and I can get first blood before level 3 nearly every single time. You just have to learn to spot these mistakes and how to punish it, and you will be climbing super fast. By the way, you should know where our guides come from. Our hyper improvement platform skill capped is the number one place to actually start improving at League of Legends. You can input your rank before signing up to see where we'll think you'll climb to. Then if you don't hit that rank while actively using skill capped, you can claim a full refund. That's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. We offer this because our services really do work. And if it doesn't, then you shouldn't pay for it. Check us out right after this. But that's going to bring us to the end of this one. We hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.